Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm Sebastian Dupuis, I'm a classical pianist and I'm doing videos about uh, my life as a pianist or as a piano teacher. So I'm also a piano teacher in Zurich. Um, the video of today will be about Hanon exercise um, or ha Hanon, Hanon, depends how you say it. It's, a, it's actually a French guy, so it's pronounced Hanon. Uh, it's this book, The Virtuoso Pianist. It's 60 exercises about uh, piano technical stuff and I I'm, I'm, will be talking about if it's good or bad because uh, I have many students playing this exercise and some really like it, some really hate it. So I will cover this a bit. Um, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, click the like button if you like it and uh, the bell if you want to get more videos like this one. I'm sometimes also just posting uh, music recording, piano recordings. So to the topic, um, exercise is a bit con controversial even with professional pianists because you have pianists like Marta Argerich who says they never did any exercise and you can see how she plays. She plays like she's one of the best pianists on, on the planet. She says she never did scales and she maybe has a natural talent that helps her. She doesn't need to practice or practice a lot or to exercise a lot. But then I would say that's an exception maybe. Uh, you have also pianists who say like exercise is not so good because it's it's killing the musicality and if you practice too much, if you are too much focused on technique or technical stuff, you like you should not disconnect this from musicality. So in other words, when you practice a work, you should practice the technical problems connected with musicality and you should not separate both. But then you have other pianists like uh, Sifra, for example, which is a okay, very technical pianist, let's say, a very technical gifted pianist who practiced a lot, who is actually more improvised um, musician, like a, we could say gypsy musician, you know, he's more like, I think he was more like working technically on the works and then improvising the music how he felt it. Uh, he said you need to practice uh, until you overcome the technical that you can feel free to express the music. That was this was his idea. And what I like to think about is uh, pianist like Liszt, which is actually the one of the biggest examples of pianists and is the father of all pianists, let's say, because he improved the technique uh, on a level we never saw before, and he's still one of the main character in piano music today. Uh, well, he was a, a prodigy, so he was uh, making concert all in Europe uh, as a child. And um, <coughs> he, uh, one day he heard Paganini play and he was so impressed by his skills at, on the violin that he thought he's not good enough and he needs to practice even more. So he started to do five hours exercise a day. And not just piano, but just exercise, like not practicing pieces. And uh, he's, he, he wrote this to a friend, he said, I hope I'm not getting crazy. Because, for example, I did sometimes one hour exercise and then you really feel uh, like your hands are hurting and you feel broken, you feel you are tired after one hour. So he did five hours, which is really a lot. But this brought, uh, I always like to think, this made out of him the pianist that we know today. So one of the most famous pianists of all history. Now, it's not only because he did exercise, of course, it's because he's a complete musician and a genius and everything, but, but people like him didn't say exercise is not uh, useful. He did exercise and that improved his technique tremendously, he made out of him the best pianist ever lived. So, so I think it's, it's like everything, it's not bad or it's not good, you just have to see how you, do, to, how you use it and use it uh, in an appropriate way. You should not overdo it maybe, you should not not do it. One thing is sure, it's like I notice for students, for people who start to play piano, mostly they struggle to play pieces and the pieces that are practicing in the beginning, there are rhythm problems, there are reading note problems, there are fingering problems, there are like coordination problems. So that they have to concentrate on many problems at once. And at least in an exercise like Hanon, they can focus only on moving the fingers and they have the feeling that they are playing a bit which is a rewarding feeling instead of trying to find one note for 10 minutes and then it's a bit frustrating that, that the music is not going on. In an exercise, you, once you understand the exercise, like Hanon number one, once you can play it, at least you are playing something and you're, you're happy to play. So for most of students that are happy doing this, that's the reason why they like doing it, because you can play without having to think too much about other stuff like rhythm and notes. Now for other people, some students really hate it because it's not really musical, because it's a bit boring. It's always the same muster, it's always the same uh, pattern coming and there is no musicality behind. 
And yeah, of course, they're, 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 in this case, I suggest they do it a bit less or they don't overdo it. Um, now, I don't think it's necessary to do a Hano exercise to learn to play piano. It's helping because also like most, of, most students face the problem that the fingers are a bit stiff and they cannot move it. And then that's one way to move them a bit and to make them uh, you know, work a bit. And other thing is like uh, in the beginning of a lesson, you come to a place where there's a piano that's different than the one you have at your home. So I always think it's a good idea to start with an exercise like Hanon because you just warm up a bit, uh, you focus on simple stuff like just moving your fingers and not have to think about rhythm like I said before and you get used to the piano for some minutes. So I wanted to talk about uh, exercise precisely uh, and I want to just to tell too that I can play the exercise. I played the exercise uh, for some years. I, I really pushed it and I wanted to see what this would bring me. I think it's always important also to know what you're talking about when you explain something. So I, I know the exercise ups and down and I can play the whole book in less than one hour. I tested it again last week to see if I still can play it in, in how much time. I chronometer the whole stuff and I can do the whole book in 59 minutes with no training before. So it means if I'm training a bit more and I'm doing this every day again, I could do it probably in less than one hour. Um, now that the goal is not to do it fast and just, just, I'm just saying this because in the book uh, Hanon is saying it should be possible to do the whole book in one hour. So it's possible, I did it, I tested it, I can play all exercises, I know them. As I said some years ago, I really pushed it and I did everyday uh, sections of the books just to because I wanted to be sure I just fully master every exercise and that's done. And I think by the way that's always good to do, like it's never bad to be able to play anything you you challenge yourself yeah like if you say I, I want once in my life to be able to play all mozart sonatas or all list exercise it's it can be only a plus it cannot be bad um so the, just to, to speak about the book a bit like it's in three parts uh, most most of uh, students know this the first part is starting very easy with this one <laughs> fingers going up and down and then about the speed I always suggest in the beginning it's important to play it uh, rather slow try to have it regular to control uh, your fingers that not one finger is going faster than another one that one finger is not getting louder than another one so be able to control it slow is a first step like I just did like <laughs> students ask sometimes how fast should I play this well there is no limit play it as fast as you can and try to push your speed but still always keep the, the control first and then the speed yeah like control and mastering is more important I think than speed because speed with no control doesn't bring uh, a lot so you can speed it up and then you can try to have the highest speed possible just for fun so I can, uh, I can play the whole book like this and I can tell, um, like I said, when I did this exercise a lot, I noticed a uh, fast improve in my technique. Like I, when I was playing the, the Mozart sonatas or some Liszt etudes or Chopin etudes, I just felt it became easier to play. My fingers were just like going faster without that I had to put so much effort in it. So I think that's a plus of making exercise. Um, now, like again, like you should not think too much about technique, like music, of course, is important too. Like you have to be able to express musicality in a piece. It means you have to understand the harmony, you have to uh, understand the emotions behind, uh, maybe the story also too. So this is all part of music that makes you a good musician, like someone people wants to listen to. And if you are focusing only on technique and like moving your finger fast, of course, it was not, this will not solve the problem or this will not make you a good musician. So that's, I think that's the main point of people who are against exercise is that if you focus too much, too much on technique, so on only technical, mechanical stuff, you are not a musician. But in the other way too, like if you are focusing only on music, but you are not able to move your fingers fast enough when it's needed, for example, when there is a scale in Beethoven sonata or where, when there are difficult, par difficult parts in Chopin pieces, for example, if you are not able to play them, well, it's getting, it's deserving, it's not serving the music either. So like always, like I said, it needs to be a balance between both things and you can push both. You can push technique and you can push musicality. You can push your knowledge in music and harmony and understanding of uh, how music works. And you can also push technical. So if, 
if you push it technically, you will get probably rid of the technical problems. And the same if you push the musicality, the understanding of a piece, you will get rid of the um, musical music understanding problems. So uh, if you are bet if you are better in both, you get better generally. Yeah, like uh, that's always uh, the same. So to finish the book, like you have 20 exercises doing a bit the same, uh, always with a different pattern. Then you have the second part, which is the same, but the exercise are a bit longer. So instead of one bar, it's two bars. So it's like <laughs> see it this you can do fast too. Then an interesting thing is you have the scales in the middle there. Uh, scales is also a bit taboo. Some hate scales, some, some say it's old school. Um, now I think my opinion about scales is scales is not really an exercise about technical thing. This time it's more an exercise about tonality, and I think it's interesting to practice scales because you just learn tonalities. So you learn how is it when I'm on uh, C sharp major, and how is it when I'm in D major, etc. So you just have have to be able to feel yourself working in every tonality directly, and for this scale helps. Now the chromatic scales is interesting too because there you just learn some finger combinations and how to get rid of these problems. Then you have then third part is specific exercise, uh, and I find these one are interesting too because it's not because like for example the repetition uh, repeated notes here that's exercise number forty four part three. <laughs> I never saw this in the work, uh, so why should I do this? And actually, it's not true. Like Liszt concerto, for example, the first piano concerto has these repeated notes. This happens sometimes that you have repeated notes, and then you are happy when you did this because then it's going more easily. But that's not the point. The point is, if you can do any kind of combination of notes or fingerings in in any order easily, you are just getting better at doing new stuff. Right? Like uh, any difficulty you will meet will be more easy because you saw many other combinations. If you didn't practice this stuff, it's less combination you learned in your, uh, like your hands can do this or your brain, like it's less stuff you learned and you did. Um, now, of course, it would also help to play, for example, all the piano works that's existing because then you also saw a lot of combinations, but these are like very uh, specific com combinations of notes and again the best is to do both like to play all the possible pieces you you meet and to play all the exercises you meet too and to try to master them um so the part like in the third part there are like quite some some difficult exercises like for example the scales in third is i don't know many people who or many students who master this but it's possible uh, so i would suggest doing them slow then the octaves are quite difficult, and then what you need in exercise also it's uh, endurance. So being able to do something for a long time, so difficult stuff for a long time. Because what you notice when you play the book through is that you get tensed after a while because just your muscles are getting tired. And it's interesting to push this also further, so you don't meet this problem in playing music. Because think about this: when you play recital of more than one hour, it's physically exhausted. So if you are overtrained for this. You just are more relaxed for one hour playing a recital and you are again more able to express musicality without having any tension. So that's what another point of uh, doing exercise and trying to do the book at once in one in one hour is that you practice uh, endurance. So it's like if you practice to do a marathon running for uh, 20 kilometers, well you are you will feel more relaxed if you run two kilometers than if you can do 20 kilometers easily, two kilometers will, will be even more easy. So that's the same there. And then one of the endurance problems here is, for example, in octaves, we feel it very fast. Etc. And after a while, this is long, so you, you can feel the tension building up. And by the way, I think octaves is also a very good practicing for having a good hand position, to have a strong hand position. Uh, so that's one more benefit of the exercise. And, and if you look at every exercise separately, there are many different benefits coming out of the exercise. So I think it's worth doing them. And as I said, you don't need to do them every day, your whole life. I think it's fine to do this in the beginning, maybe. And then once you can play them all, like my stage, for example, I know I did them for a while. I can play them all. Now I'm not playing them anymore. I'm sometimes taking the book and checking if I still can play it, if I'm still fit. 
Sometimes I'm notice I'm not so fit anymore because I'm not practicing a lot anymore, and then I'm doing them maybe a bit more to get this this physical uh, strength again. So yeah, that's my opinion. And um, we are Sunday morning. I just woke up and came at the piano. As a concert pianist, I would probably start with making uh, some exercise. I could start with this to warm up. I started the list exercise, which are really interesting too, because he's really exploring the tonalities much more than Hanno, which is staying in the beginning on the wild keys. Um, I remember also like high fets. I saw a video of high fets, the violinist high fets, one of the greatest virtuoso and musician on the violin. Uh, he used to wake up too and go to his to his studio uh, across the the garden and starting with very slow scales because it's a way to warm up. It's a way to create a contact with the instrument, more relaxed than in in an etude or in a piece. Um, and the violin is probably even more important because you need to practice accuracy to be um, to play. Uh, right pitch, yeah, like which you don't have on the piano, but on the piano you still have to press the wrong, the right note, yeah, not, not to press both. So it's also you, you have to kind of to to um, to build the relation between you and the instrument, and you have to build this relation every day again. And the nice way to start it is with exercise, I think, mostly or with pieces slowly. But then I have this other argument, like if you practice technique in music pieces you might destroy a bit the music like if you are practicing every morning uh, the same Beethoven sonata slow and with metronome let's say I think this is a bad idea because you will get bored of listening to this sonata you will start to play it mechanically so that's why I think it's not bad to separate technical and, and music pieces you can then focus really on technical technical stuff on exercise and then you can concentrate on musicality when you practice works a bit more but again, there is no right, there is no wrong. I think everyone has his relation with this stuff and everyone has his way to function. I think you have to find a balance between this. And uh, I think you should not exclude it, but you should not also be uh, deifying this and, and exaggerating the importance of exercise either. So to finish the, this chapter, I, like, I, I want to remember you again, like think about lists, if people like lists, who were already geniuses did exercises there is probably a good reason that's the first thing i was thinking that's why i am doing exercises because i thought list is doing it look what a wonderful musician this became it cannot be wrong if i'm doing it or at least i will explore it and see where it brings me i saw for myself it helped me a lot to do exercise i'm seeing students it's helping them a lot too when they do exercise some really don't like it but then after a while once they can do it they start to like it i think that's why it works with most of stuff so build your own relationship tell me what's your opinion about exercise if you like to do them how much you do how much time you need to do the hand on there are many other exercises what good to do uh, there's pishna for example remember a good exercise i recommend the list exercise they are they are super difficult and they are very uh, exhausting mostly because of tonalities because you're always changing tonalities uh, but it's worth exploring too like uh, do, do them slowly uh, one one a day just explore the exercise it's always nice to explore new stuff don't forget to do also the work on musical pieces, read Beethoven sonatas, read Mozart sonatas, read uh, unknown pieces you have there and take it like I have Alcan, I take this and I read it, I have Brusoni, I take this and I try to see how it's working, that's very important too. Practice on pieces, try to, to get to a high level. Don't forget when you practice something to put it on the side for a while and to come to it later, this also helps. So I hope this helped, this video, and this gave you a bit more uh, uh, will to uh, practice exercise and I'm sure I'm sure if you do exercise you will feel the benefit if you do it correctly thank you for looking see you next video